Hey guys, and welcome to episode 141 of the Upper LA Podcast. My name is Scott Ellis. I wasn't prepared. I'm joined here by Tim McGavick. Yeah. You're here. And Tyler Swatowski. It's a fact. Mm-hmm. Welcome. And Adam Franey. Yep. Wow. You guys are really excited. excited, man. Let's run down we're some of the topics. Here. Sorry. We're going to discuss on this week's episode. As usual, we're going to talk about the last film we watched this week. As well as a couple of news topics. We got some trailers. We got Venom. We got Woman Walks Ahead from A24. I Ooh. think that's all we need to know. Am I right? And also Smallfoot. Ooh. A little fun for the family animated flick. Mm. As well, if you do like this video, leave a like on it. Leave a comment below in the comment section. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Yeah. With that out of the way, Tim. Yeah. Can you What's please up, start us off this week? I got a little tie-in oh, to... Tim uh, going first? That's weird. I got... Uh, you looking at my mug? I haven't seen... Uh, have oh. I seen this mug? Oh, yeah. It's my Captain America mug. Holy yeah. shit, man. Um, I have a little tie-in to our big review of the week, which is Infinity War. Yes. After being released from a psychiatric ward, Ingrid, a social media-obsessed woman, love, uh, moves to L.A., where, where she inserts herself into the life of Instagram star Taylor Sloan. Starring one Aubrey Plaza, oh. one Scarlet Witch herself, Elizabeth Olsen. I was going to say, there what's the tie-in? O'Shea there. Jackson as a Batman-loving... Not, not a tie-in. Not Comic tie-in. tie-in. Spec screenwriter. Wyatt Russell and uh, Billy Magnuson. Ooh. It says nice Ingrid, Ingrid Goes West on Netflix. I not do. a Netflix original, but it's on Netflix now. I do love Aubrey Plaza. I did, I did want to see this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, written by Matt Spicer and David Branson Smith. Directed by Matt Spicer. So, what'd you think, Tyler? <laughs> uh, this is a really good movie. It surprised I it. me. I, um, I love this movie. It was yeah. uncomfortable to watch. It. Like, it's not, like, gross or anything like that, but I'm just, like, you're just waiting the whole time. Because, essentially, you, it's not a big reveal. Mm-hmm. She pretty much is stalking this Instagram person, yeah. and she moves to LA and, like, forcibly and first, and, like, inserts herself into her life by, like, show. visiting the places she wants to go to. So, the whole time you're waiting for Elizabeth Olsen to, like, catch on. Yeah. That Aubrey Plaza is not who she says she is. And it's just so much cringe things happen. The cringe level is cringe. I'm cringing thinking about it. I'm like, "Mm." yeah, cringe is high. Like, it's not quite as cringeworthy as, say, Killing of the Sacred Deer, but. (laughs) Well, nothing. It's quite cringe. I'm just like, why are you saying these things? Why are you doing this? Why are you there? Why? It's off putting. It's off putting. Um, But yeah, the performances are great. I usually am not a big fan of Aubrey Plaza. She kind of does the same thing over and over again, but she stretches it a lot in this. Oh, she does. Um, She pushes herself. Pushes herself. Elizabeth Olsen's great in it. Wyatt Russell, I thought, was great as well. Yeah. He he usually plays like a very goofy type of dude, but he's like kind of like the more level-headed person in this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, The brother, Magnuson. He went to 11 in this one. Straight douchebag. Yeah. Feel like, feel like I've seen people like that in, in, in real life. He's like, (laughs) I think you mentioned during your last scene, there's a scene where he's just like at a party and he's by, he's by himself and he like roundhouse kicks like, (laughs) like a inflatable thing. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, it's so stupid. He's that kind of guy. He like comes up and like, pretends to party trap people. I'm like, so stupid. Love those people. At parties. Um, and then O.J. Jackson is just literally hilarious. Yeah, he's, my he's like this Batman loving guy. He has like the Batman Forever soundtrack in his car. <laughs> he's like always making quotes about Batman. It's hilarious. I love that he loves um, Batman Forever. Yeah, yeah, specifically the Batman Forever. Ridiculous. Um, oh my yeah, it was really good. Really, really good. Um, I like the ending as well. Mm. I I remember. I try to remember exactly what happened I mean, in the ending, but I can tell you. After like it's wrote it. pretty heavy. Yeah, it's a weird mixed message right. ending because she's like very obsessed with her phone and stuff, and then something happens, and it kind of like it's kind of two sided about what happened right. with it. I guess right. you put. Um, some, I don't know if the writers meant for it to be as like. I think they. I think they, they tipped thought, around it because it's still spoiler. Yeah, I think they thought that they're putting like a positive message, but at the end, it's still it's still not like a very positive message about mm-hmm. what happens. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I liked it. I'm gonna give it a, a four. Wow. Okay. That's four. what I gave it. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Some very funny moments as well. A couple times where I laughed. Oh wow. Out really? loud. Was it Aubrey Plaza that set it off, or was it just like uh, was it just the situation? Okay. More like 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 situational things that were happening. Okay. So I find that I mean, she makes me giggle, but I never like laugh out hard at her. Like she like no. her style is not like like laugh out hard comedy, but like whenever she's like she doesn't like, cringe or she'll say laugh something, it's just like that's pretty good. Oh, she actually made me laugh out loud. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's the funniest character yeah. by far. 
the spec script. That sex scene was hilarious. And bizarre. <laughs> I, was saying, what, like, I was waiting for the bizarre part. <laughs> Involves cat. Ty, cat what do you got for us? Um, I've got a flick Ooh. that I should have seen probably a long time ago. Mm, like, I like that. Like most movies. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, Mystery yeah. Man? Uh, Did you watch Mystery Man? Like, I haven't just, Okay, I haven't seen Mystery Man. Apparently it's going to be amazing. Stay tuned. I might see it next week. Is it on Netflix? Probably. No. I very cool. Very Tim, you got it on blue? I do not. I have you not have seen it. on VHS. <laughs> you have on VCR? I will find a VCR. <laughs> Alright. Right. So, did you look? Let's no. try to see. Okay. Let's see um, So, just heads up. I haven't finished it. We guessed that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's like, it's longer than I thought it was going to be. And I realized, uh, like, before the movie that uh, I haven't seen my last scene. So, I'm like, oh, you got to put something up now, I guess. We're recording today. Uh, 1994. Mm. Rated uh, R. Ooh. Oh. A little drama horror? Any guesses? A little drama what? Drama horror? <laughs> drama horror. 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 <laughs> drama horror? horror. You guys familiar with that genre? I am. A horror. Mm-hmm. 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 Interesting. Uh, starring one... I'm gonna go vague here. Mm. Uh, Kirsten Dunst. Interview the Vampire. Vampire. Fuck, you guys are good. Do you see the that girl? is a long movie. It is very long. I was yeah. going to say Christian Slater. That would have been better. It is an epic movie. Yes. What were you thinking? That's so How long, long is it? Is Two it hours like... and three minutes. Oh, it's not as long but as it I seems thought. longer than that. Yeah, I fell asleep. Oh, it drags. It drags. When they go to Spain? I think Honestly, Spain? 20 minutes in, it dragged. Yeah. <laughs> it was I love this for the movie. whole hour it's a and 40 l- minutes after that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long movie. Yeah. Uh, How far did you get? He, okay, so things have happened. He's just gone. He got. He's back in America now. I'm pretty sure I've got to be close to the I'm end. Talking minutes wise, like an hour, hour and a half. Oh, I don't know. When I press pause, the thing didn't come up, so I got no idea. If they're back in America, like modern day. Yeah. Yeah, you're almost done. Yeah, I figured out, I've, got, I've got to be almost finished. Yeah. Then we yeah. had dinner reservations, yeah. so I was like, okay, well, I guess we'll leave now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. So, b- cast, starring one young. Very young Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. very young Brad Pitt. Yes. Mm-hmm. One like, confusing Antonio Banderas. Did not expect him to be there. Me either. He showed up out of nowhere. Uh, Kirsten Dunst, very young. Yeah. Child. Is this like one of her first roles? It's like, gotta be. This is literally her first role. Um, <laughs> Christian Slater, uh, who I actually really enjoy. I uh, like, like Christian Slater. He's, he's like the uh, he's like the Greg Kinnear, I think. Uh, you are Tandy Newton. I saw there. I don't know who that person is. Tandy Newton. Tandy Newton. Is it Tandy Newton. Is it Tandy? Is it Tandy? Th. So I'm assuming mm-hmm. Tandy. Uh, yeah, and then a bunch of uh, other people. Helen yeah. McCory. I know her. She plays the second whore. What do you think? <laughs> what it does? says second whore. It drama whore. Yeah. What did drama you, whore. What did you think horror. of it? Um, did I you like it. I liked it. I I I thought it was good. It just it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, I I thought it was going to be a lot more uh, interviewing. Yeah, yeah. It kind of just starts the story, and like you got, you got uh, Brad Pitt sitting down with uh, Greg Kinnear, and just kind of sitting there. And um, Greg Kinnear's in it. Yeah, Greg Kinnear. He plays the interviewer. Oh, okay. Yeah, not. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he's so he's just sitting there. Like it just kind of starts with with an interview, and then it just kind of goes into his story. And very they don't often go back into the interview, which is kind of what I was. Mm. I was hoping I was, I was kind of thinking it'd be a little more to that. Like it was maybe more in mo- like set in that time, not uh, not so much of a story being told. So I was kind of thrown off by that. But it's not bad. This wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, the pacing. I thought the pacing was weird. Like the way they, they put it weird. together, super slow pace. And I, you're right. I did think they would cut back and forth more, but they did not. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like a lot more like action going on in like the present time. It could be more there. Yeah, sure. like I definitely think there could there could be a lot more going on there. Like, like almost like a second storyline going on. So like, he starts the story, hour and forty minutes later, cuts back to the story. Yeah, exactly. Like, once in a while, actually, they did cut once back in. He had, uh, Christian Slater had to change his tape, so uh, put a new tape in. Right. And then they continued with the story. So I'm glad they put that in the there. Otherwise, part. I would have forgotten that it was an interview. That's very witty. That's, yeah, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. that's cool. Very well done. I like that. Very nineties. Um, yeah, very nineties. Christian Slater looking very nineties. Um, Christian Slater being a movie signifies its nineties. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Christian Slater. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, like not really much. I I want like it was done well, really done well. Tom Cruise was kind of weird in it. Uh, I liked it. He was very very bizarre in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got Full like. 
long hair flying around, like laughing. Like he's got like a he's got like a couple weird mannerisms that he does throughout the. Uh... It's one of the few movies that he's done where he really puts himself out there. Yeah, and I you know I didn't mind it. Like I kind of liked that he was if if he was. I'm glad he did when he was younger because I don't think that he would be able to pull this off now. Like it was like, like it was like. Well, guess what? You guys see Dracula and Told? Don't. Sequel coming at you. Don't you dare. I'm kidding. Don't you dare. TC. Well, it's interesting they said this. It was like, it's called like the Interview of the Vampire, colon, the Vampire Chronicles. Is there more to it than that? I think it's based off a book, and I think it's, there's a series of books. Okay, yeah. Sure. That's, okay, that's what, I, that's what I got from it, but like, uh, were they planning on doing more? I don't know. Because if you're doing, you know, the movie, I didn't think they would have done anything They're like not that. doing more. It yeah. was 1994. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Hey, yeah, you Anything don't know. Possible. Yeah, twenty-four years. Anything is possible. But um, yeah, other than that, like, not really much more I can say about it. Just kind of a slow pace. But every once in a while, there's like a kind of as a firecracker thrown there every once in a while, and that's pretty much it. Um, Would you hit me with rating wise? Uh, five, right? it's gonna be a five probably. <laughs> um, Shit. three. Nah, nah. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna hit this with a with a with a, with a light three, I think. Mm, yeah, savage. yeah, it's it's bland. Yeah, it's, it's like I I feel like Ruthless. I I feel like going into it, I want to like it more than I did. It's chicken and rice to me. I mm. like. Well, that's not bad. Chicken and rice. No. It's just plain. It's plain. Adam. Adam, what do you got? Plain, Let me bud. step right up here, folks. Uh, 1991. Oh, oh Vampire oh. Diaries. Fried green tomatoes. Oh mm. shit! You already logged this, eh? Yeah. You already did not have a... time for last scene. Had to go back in the letterbox archives. That's for the listeners. A housewife who is unhappy with her life befriends an old lady in a nursing home and is enthralled by tales she tells of people she used to know. So Cornerstone of gay cinema. Very. <laughs> this sounds even more bland than Interview of the Vampire. Yeah, it's like Interview with the Vampire without the vampire. It's just like with white women just sitting around talking. Interview with the lady. Yeah. <laughs> uh, starring Kathy Bates. Oh, yeah. Does she play the old, the, the old lady? No, no she this is 91. The, this is back in the yeah. I don't know, man. She's always been like that age to me. <laughs> it's true. Oh, she's, she's older. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mary she's Stewart Macerson, <laughs> Mary Louise Parker, hey. Oscar nominated Jessica Tandy, who plays the old lady. Mm. Hadn't heard of her before. I, I think it's Tandy. T A N D Y. Tandy, Tandy. Uh, Chris O'Donnell. Just Ooh. a really Whoa, juicy one. Whoa, he's that. also can tell if it's a 90s movie. There you go. Chris so O'Donnell. Old his career ended Spacey after Batman and Robin. Right oh, okay. No. Okay. Sure. Uh, directed by John Avnet. And uh, yeah, it's a cute little coming of age movie. Mm. Nothing spectacular goes on, as you might imagine. It's very stale. Uh, it is just. Did you give it a four and a half on Letterboxd? Five. Okay, right. <laughs> uh, Ka- <laughs> Kathy Bates um, is, you know, she's just fed up with life and marriage, and she's kind of living vicariously through this old lady's stories. Vicariously, so I'm sorry. Bi curiously, bi curious, bi curiously, or bi curiously, bi bicyclistly, um, vicariously or bi curiously, vi, okay, because oh, it could have been a very different movie. vicariously. It would have been an interesting, movie. yeah, vi curiously. Well, actually, the old lady may be a little bi curious. Oh, she's younger. Well, I got to check. That's why I said it was a cornerstone of gay cinema. Um, I wasn't kidding. Oh, okay, a couple places is. I didn't expect. I will say that there was some with the flashbacks being in like the 40s and 50s there was some actual conflict that I enjoyed like KKK Mm. comes into play there's a a main black character so there's some interesting like actual threat there it's not just your slice of life it would have been dangerous there's a plot there is a plot there's a point need a plot there was a point (laughs) movies gotta have plots otherwise Um, what are we doing there was plotting this old lady had a pretty interesting life people died people were beaten yeah there, there was a few twists i will say whoa oh you heard me uh dare i say someone gets cancer and passes away incredibly misty-eyed scene who between uh like, handle if you're joking or not pe- he's he's be serious okay because like you're telling you're saying all these things like this thing happens it's so like i'm like i can't tell if you're actually Bearing saying my soul okay anyways sorry uh, yeah, beautiful scene between the older lady when she's younger and Mary Louise Parker. Just some top-notch acting. It was fine. It was very fine. I may have even, dare I say, rolled a tear. It's just your classic, so like, tearjerker. Yeah, it was just very... 
I feel like it's been done a million it times. Like interview with a vampire. It's a good watch with your girlfriend. You know, yeah. it's yeah. Interview watch with, with vampires and masterpieces. Yeah. Oh, grandma, if you're out there. <laughs> love it. Any grandmas would love this film. Specifically, Mind Adam's me. grandma though, if she's watching <laughs> this. I know you listen every day. Uh, we yeah, every I'll bring day. you back to your childhood. She just watches it every day. Oh, um, it, doesn't matter. it goes back in the archives. Mm-hmm. Heavy three. Good. It's pretty good. It's a little cookie cutter, you know. We've all seen this movie. Before. Who doesn't like a, co- a good cookie? You know, it's Sunday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. my cookies. Throw it on. I like consistency. You know, I like to I have all my cookies be the same. I like cookies. PC chocolate. Jessica cookies. Tandy. That's it, right there. It's terrifying in it. I will say that. Who's this? Jessica Tandy, the old lady who's yeah. counting your life. It's supposed to be a sweet old lady. Literally, is a hobgoblin. She is so scary in it. She's like a zombie. Like beginning scary. of the Vovich kind of scary. Yeah. Like. Yeah. yeah, like a cackling witch, baby jam witch. Scotty, I'm gonna jump in with my last scene. All right, I watched a documentary. Oh, different. Okay, I feel I like Tim has last seen this like a long time ago. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, searching for Sugar Man. I have yes. <laughs> How long ago was that? Do you think a year and a half? Came out ago? like two years ago. Came out in 2012. Yeah. So that's so six years ago. Yeah, so Maybe it didn't last scene because I saw it I pretty last... soon after it was really came out. Yeah, I I don't even know how to. I don't want to read the synopsis. Don't yeah. Um, it's the story of these journalists, I guess, people yeah. trying to find out the story behind this sort of under Vampire. seen, under recognized musical artist from the seventies named Rodriguez from Detroit. Who came out with like two albums and then sort of disappeared from, you know, knowledge from everyone. And it's, I don't want to say too much because it kind of has this, how do I put it? Like, um, I don't know, quite imposter level, like twists, but like certainly some, some shocking ter- twists and turns yes. to it um, that I did not expect at all going in. Me either. Yeah. And I went in sort of knowing like, it's this about some musical artists. Yeah. And that's all I knew going into it. That's all I wanted to know. And it was great. It's an excellent documentary. I feel like it's hard to review a documentary, like like a film, mm-hmm. because, you know, you can't rate you the judge. performances yeah. and yeah. the cinematography yeah. and the direction. Although, well, you can rate the direction. I will yeah. say it was... The way it was structured was fantastic. Just the yeah, way... There's some documents that are structured very poorly. With floating heads. But the, yeah. this just had me... Just grabbed me from the beginning and yeah. just pulled me into this crazy story. Um, just twists and turns and reveals and crazy stuff going on and I was like whoa did not see that coming and yeah I don't really want to say too much more but uh, check it out if you haven't searching for I've heard it's excellent. Yeah. Sugar Man it's one of those documentaries where uh, Anderson and Brian on Film Vault always mention it uh-huh. that the best doc- uh, documentaries um, have like obviously an interesting, sub- uh, interesting subject matter but then there's also like a bit of luck that happens yeah because um, yeah. there's one called Captain Stickers Freeman's Stanford. which is about something and then something else is revealed that they were lucky enough that they were filming around that time that this thing came up same thing with uh, Sugar Man same thing with um, I think King, King Kong is similar where like yes. it's just like you happen to get a little bit more access than you're anticipating did you sorry to really change the subject yeah do you know what happened to the guy from King of Kong Yes, recently, yes. Completely obliterated. Yeah. All his records. Yeah. <laughs> Not the main guy, the guy that he was... He cheated. The guy that he was trying to beat, the guy with the long hair, Yeah, has been stripped of his records. Why? He, like, cheated. He was, like, emulator. Didn't use the actual machine. Yeah. He was, like, exposed. Boom. Yeah. But it was No like longer the... You know, life is a lie. <laughs> all his records are lies. Anyway, searching for Sugar Man. Yeah, good. It, it, if you guys haven't seen as well, Icarus, very similar... Do what you're describing. How there's a there's a some luck. Yeah. Like in Icarus, there's this giant thing where you're like, what the fuck? Like, how did they? The movie started as the documentary started as this, turned into like yeah. some completely different thing. Yeah. Uh, because of what happened during the filming, and uh, yeah, but searching for Sugar Man, check it out if you haven't. It's uh, I don't know if it's on Netflix. I have it on my BB Blue. If you guys want to watch it. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I might have to. Uh... Interesting. Oh. I went to my watch list no, and I ranked them by shortest to <laughs> longest. I've done it and before. <laughs> Let me tell you. I got some silent films on there and then I got and then I was searching for Sugar Man. <laughs> so it's like hour twenty. So definitely an easy Hour twenty? Yeah. yeah. Oh that would be good. It's a dream. So it's a dream. In, I'm so in, but... 
let's move on. We got some news to discuss. Let's start off with uh, probably the biggest trailer that dropped this past week. We got Venom. I was gonna say Smallfoot. <laughs> the Venom. Fuck no. The Venom. Not. The not bitch. Wemum? Wemum? <laughs> Is that the the Wemum? <laughs> If there was um, going to be a time to bring your Venom mug, it would have been today. That's going to be October when the movie comes out. Mm. No. Starring... Wait, I think I had... Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Woody Riz Garrison. Ahmed. Riz Ahmed. Terry Mulligan? No. Or the other one. What's her name? Oh, Anyways, Michelle Venom. Williams? Adam, let's start with you. What do you think of Venom? Michelle <laughs> Williams? I love the Venom character. I've... I've always been a fan. I well. think we've all wanted to see Venom done right since the Topher Grace debacle. 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 Uh, sabotaging, I would call it. Uh, I love Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. I, I love Tom Hardy. Uh, I think this movie could be good. Also could be shit. I love... Thank you for really weighing in on this opinion. Stance. Yes. I I think it's going to be shit. I can't shake the feeling that it's going to be shit. But you're saying it shows promise. Yeah, like I... They're I, doing... We're seeing the right things. I love the clip of him transforming, obviously, the money shot. That's that's like my... Yeah, my yeah. childhood dream. I'm like, oh my we God. Oh, Venom. Huh? They are Venom. But I just have this scary feeling like they're polishing a turd. I'm just so scared. Like... Him, like we've heard the reports that and they did like a mass amount of reshoots or something like this, or so it was something they happened. did reshoots. Yeah. And like we've heard that he's never like he rarely becomes Venom in it. And I've seen the clips from the trailer, he's just sort of like half in the water, half out with like the uh symbiote, like shooting at guys, yeah, the symbiote as they call it, as, symbiote. They, as they call it, yeah, that really threw um, me off, yeah, not the symbiote or the symbiote. The symbiote. The symbiote. Symbiote. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Wakanda. I like the... It's weird. I like the trailer, but I just have a weird feeling it's going to be shit. Ty, what do you think? Um, How do you feel? Well, I only recently discovered that uh, Venom is very different from what I had seen. Uh, I.e. depicted by Topher Grace. Mm. Oh, yeah. so, mm. so that's new. The real, the real goat. The yeah. Depiction is what yeah, you're yeah, yeah. The more accurate depiction. Um, so Blonde hair. I gotta say, Adam, I I agree with you. It looks like I think we're gonna get. Uh, it looks like we're showing a lot of promise here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing like there's two kind of sides to what we're seeing with this character. Um, I like that. I might agree with you though. I think that like it looks it looks good. But there's this like this like this shaking feeling that for some reason what we're seeing is not what we're gonna get. Get a green let me let vibe. me jump in. Yeah, like something like on. that. Yeah. It looks like it's gonna be shit. Really? Not. I'm on the fence. It might be shit. I think it looks <laughs> shit. Really? I think Venom looks good. I think the movie looks like shit though. That's Interesting. Kind of, We're talking about the movie yeah, itself. Kind of how I feel. Looks well. like shit. Based on how the trailer was cut. Yes. Or, okay. What I'm seeing in the trailer. Oh, really? Venom. The We Are Venom shot. Yeah. Yeah, the money shot looks cool. Yeah. That's it. That's all I got. Like okay. if you took that out. Shit. Previous trailer. And I, I look back. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. I look back yeah. through my notes because I was True. trying to remember the movie. Um, just maybe because he looks like uh, Tom <laughs> Hardy, but um, Upgrade. Remember that movie Upgrade? Yeah. That's exactly what I was trying to think of what it was. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Because I just thought that movie has nothing going for it except the action. And just the quality of the film itself and the action. It doesn't have a big star. You know, it's like almost like a B-movie, basically, this action movie. So I don't know if you guys So were, it's going to be great. Was it just when, when we did it, the episode? Anyways, maybe, maybe. or maybe you were there. No? Upgrade? I don't know. That doesn't ring a bell. You guys talk a lot. I got that vibe, too, from like Tom Hardy like not knowing what he was doing. I mean, like, why would we do that? And then, like, Whoa! zing, zing, zing. And Upgrade, I just feel like that had shocks in it. Yeah. I was like, oh, whoa, fuck, yeah. what the fuck is that? And I was like laughing. This, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Oh, go, we are Venom, that's cool. And maybe because I saw the clip before of him transforming, it took all the surprise away. Maybe I'd be like hype right now. But everything I'm seeing except for that shot yeah. looks like shit. I, I, I had the wool pulled over my eyes and you just ripped that curtain down. 
So they they glamour dude with the final. Him, him like flying on that bike and like just like so, we've seen CG that. things pulling him on. I'm like, oh, what is this that's... Red Bull Air? What is this? <laughs> Tim, what do you think? You, can you weigh in? As, please? I think mm-hmm. you. I think you are the Venom lover of the podcast. Right? I love Venom. I know that you. I know you, you do. But you know, I'm saying you don't have a mug with Venom. Say something. I love Venom. Always have. Yeah. Ever since. Super cool. The Venom series in the Spider-Man animated show. Okay. From the 90s. Uh, looks like shit. Um, <laughs> Venom, though, looks fucking great. Okay. And the whole, like, yeah. saying we are Venom and, I like, like that. being, like, girl Fire. is just straight amazing. Love it. I think it's cool. I, I like went back and characters. rewatched a few Venom scenes from yeah. Spider-Man 3 to, to see if it's, like, as bad as I remember being. It's much worse. <laughs> Um, the mouth is you're weird. saying this to me as if I loved it. I assume you loved it. Okay, well, I, yeah, uh, I assume Topher I Grace it. is the goat. It's pretty much so. just Topher Grace's voice as well, which is weird. Um, but yeah, the actual movie just looks so bland so and boring. like generic. I like Tom Hardy, and Tom Hardy looks good in it. He's doing an American accent. Yeah, and he's doing his drop accent. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, Very the drop. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Ruben Fleischer, who you trust? It's just a weird movie. I would have preferred just say Tom Hardy, put him in the MCU as yeah. Eddie Brock. What the fuck? In New York. Yeah, but you're asking way too much. I think they will. I think they will. Oh, I think they're leading to that. Yeah. Well, they did say in association with Marvel, so I think that somehow there's going to be a tie-in. Oh, yeah. Well, because Marvel is helping them out with it, probably. Yeah, so that's why I think there's going to be a natural tie-in. Rated, um, I'm pretty sure it's rated R. That gives me some more. But yeah, there's two things that are helping me with it. A, well, three things. A, Venom looks great. It's rated R. It's coming out in October. Which is usually a pretty decent month for movies to come out. Unless it's being marketed as like a horror movie, then it's usually a pretty shit month for it to come out. Mm. So we'll see. But yeah, I agree, Scott. It looks like shit, but Venom looks sick. That's all I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we got, uh, we're switching gears a lot. We got a little historical drama starring Jessica Chastain, Oscar winner, mm-hmm. Sam Rockwell. Oh! Um, and. <laughs> <laughs> Woman Walks Ahead is the name of the film. It's the story of, I don't know the name of her character, but Jessica Chastain's character who travels to the Midwest to paint a painting of Chief City Bull, Bull, who is a real historical. This is a, it's sort of based on true events. Uh, Ty, let's start with you. What do you think of this? Are you excited? This well, is very exciting. Start with me on this, this. There's so much excitement here. Uh, you see Jessica Chastain. She's on a train. You got Sam Rockwell on the train. They get off the train. She paints. You're in. I'm in, obviously. You've named what's in the trailer. That's. I don't know. I is that Scott. How we know when you're. In you got nothing, Tim. I, <laughs> I. Okay, here's my thing. This here's, is it's a it's a it's a western with Sam Rockwell. What mm-hmm. do you think? Western. Sam Check. Rockwell. A twenty four. Uh, I'm in. Painting. Chief Sitting Bull. Chief Sitting Bull. <laughs> you got a, you got an easel probably somewhere in there. I'm in. I think it'd be good. You got the King Beyond. I'm the not Bowl. expecting it to be like amazing or like some big like I don't know like Oscar winning movie. But I think it's gonna be a nice little movie. Some could, nice. Could scenes. be a nice little companion piece to Hostiles or something. You know, it looks, it looks very, very hostile. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like Hostiles. Uh, I like Hostiles. This guy it's fine. It. Yeah. This could it could be just you know what this is fine just like Hostiles. I think. Yeah. It, I think I think it could be that. I think Sam Rockwell yeah. is going to be great, though. He's always fantastic. I think he's, he's always fantastic. Justine's so. always great, but she seems to be doing an accent, which I didn't love. I didn't know this. Um, it's like, it just looks like it could be bland to me. That's the problem I'm having right now. Is it looks like, it, like the only thing that's kind of saving it is, like you, you guys said, A24. So it's like... I just think it's a poor trailer. It doesn't, yeah. The trailer doesn't set up any sort of conflict, really. There's nothing, besides the there's fact that happening. the army's coming for Sitting Bull, but like... I don't know. Yeah, I know. You guys know. know what happens with Sitting Bull in real life? Yes. No. Vaguely, don't. yes. Like General Custer, that whole thing. Oh. Is it interesting? Yes. Quite. Okay. I'm Adam, in. what do you think? I'm in from what you just said. <laughs> I love Rockwell. Might not go to that. It might not get to that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I have a feeling uh, it will. Well, I like Hostiles. I mean, I like Sam Rockwell. I like Chastain. I like Westerns. I guess I'm in. I agree that like the trailer doesn't didn't do anything that blew my mind. Boring as yeah. shit. Looks a l- could be stale. Yeah, it could be one of those things where it's like, oh, this is just fine. Like there really is nothing. Like they're not holding anything back. She's <laughs> like, literally just painting him. Because I never know. Like this trailer could be holding 
back like a shootout or something or some sort of big conflict god i hope so or it yeah. could not be and there's just nothing to show i think it is it's a i mean the thing is it's 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 geared towards a certain type of film Niche. going right yeah. Niche. that you not know, me don't necessarily have to go for the big action set yeah it's not you know it's no revenant or anything so mr right oh god that's um, great, buddy. Yeah, it looks good to me let's let's move on um i'm not sure what studio this is from it looks like DreamWorks. Is it? Or is it like Illumination or whatever? Also kind of looks like Illumination. Oh, it could be either one. Anyway, small, we got Smallfoot. Story of a Bigfoot. Yeti. Meeting Yeti. a Smallfoot, <laughs> a.k.a. A human, and hijinks ensue. And it's an animated kids comedy, whatever you want to call it. 90 minutes of family fun. Um, starring Channing Tatum. Oof. Oh, I guess the, this trailer, the trailer that we watched... You missed it. Listed all the. There's a actors. big. There's a big cast actually for this. There's a big one in there. The King. Oh yeah, he's someone else, right? The TC. King. The King. Tom Cruise. LeBron James. Uh, is a character in this. What? No. Tim, please look it up right now. I'm looking up. Uh, I'm gonna start off. Looks fine, <laughs> I guess. Fine. That's kind of that's kind of an oversell, to be yeah. honest. Um, Ceiling is fine. I can't conform. I chuckled twice. Confirm. Can't conform. Um, I, support, I can LeBron perform. LeBron James, Gina Rodriguez, Danny DeVito, <laughs> Zendaya, Zendaya, Common. What? James Corden and Channing Tatum. James Corden, I'm in. What was that Tony Shalhoub? What? Tony Shalhoub? <laughs> no, no. Oh. All right. I got so excited for a second. <laughs> Love Tony Shalhoub. I chuckled a couple times, like the screaming goat. And <laughs> that's, I, that's just an easy. <gasps> that's an easy chuckle. The oh. goat. Mm. I have something that Tim loves in movies. Screaming when, <laughs> when, when someone tries to say something in another language, he's just saying it normally, and they go back to how the other person's seeing it, and he's just like screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Tim loves that. I love that too. It happened, happened in that Christian. It did in the Christian. That Christmas Christian. Movie. Movie. Movie, we're like, oh, yeah. guys, we gotta go here. This quickly happens. And it goes back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's from Warner Animation Group, who did the Lego movie, Lego Batman movie, Storks, uh, Lego Ninjago. Oh. So, it's those guys. Two for four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm in. Huh. One for four. Like shit, I'm in. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I'm on the fence. It could be actually good. You think so? It looks like it, it might. It looks too way too safe. Honestly, it might. It might be good. I'm seeing. Is that a is that a hot take? Uh, yeah, this is like that'll melt all the snow. <laughs> small. <laughs> like but... this looks like safe times a thousand. Like I'll be honest, the trailer I chuckled at maybe like twice, but the goat, <laughs> the goat, and the, the proverbial the way goat. that the human hears us. Yeah, here, 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 uh, not us. Yeah, but the Bigfoot. Yeah, and vice versa. But um, I don't know. It could be one of those ones you're like, what? That got fucking nominated this year? Oh, it could, it could be this yeah, year's Boss yeah. Baby. It might be. Yeah. What do you What do you guys think? I uh, it, if it was more like a Shrek movie, like something where it's like that you saw like comedy for the kids and the adults, like like little things like that, I'd be happy. But I'm not getting anything like that for anyone other than like the age of seven. You didn't like the toilet paper joke? That's hilarious. No, I didn't even get it. <laughs> like it was stupid. But the goat yeah, thing was hilarious. Get it. <laughs> they put important stuff on there. Man. Oh, okay. So it was just it's supposed it was, to be not they funny. They thought it was some scroll, some ancient scroll. No, no, I got yeah, it. I was just missing the humor. It's supposed to be unfunny. Yeah. Oh, perfect. They nailed it. So that. hilarious. Think of a joke, but not funny. Just, just poop on it. Do you guys know what I want about the ice fisherman? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, what do you think, Tim? I think it looks fine. Could be garbage. Probably will be garbage. What was that bull movie? Not we garbage. Oh, uh, Fernando. Fernando? Ferdinand. 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 I don't think it's Fernando really bad. Is that I think it's for... best animated picture yeah, of was, right? Yeah, this could. Yeah. Yeah. Boss Baby, Garbage, best oh, animated God. picture. I don't necessarily think this is going to be like a you bad movie. Them. I think it's just going to be like a perfect kid movie. Yeah, for no one else but yeah. them. Yeah. Like Arthur Christmas or something like that. Yes. But usually it doesn't look bad, to be honest, <laughs> as well. Just Arthur pure Christmas. visuals. Yeah. Like there's garbage there's, animated on the age of The scenes time. where they're like in the human kind of village thing, like I don't know, like the neon lights, I was like, this is... You know what? Visually, not bad. What do you guys think? Huh. I've had him. Uh, looks like shit. Nah. 
Well, that'll do it for <laughs> episode 141 of the Upper Late Podcast. Tim, where can people find us? Uh, on a high note. People can find us on Twitter at Upper Late. You can find me personally on... I'm missing one there. Nope. No, nope, you're good. Find me personally on Letterboxd at Real Tim and on Instagram at The Craft Pundit. How many episodes yeah. are we at? 141. 141. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram at Up Real Late Podcast. You can also. <laughs> you fucked it up too. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm good. You also find me. Shit. Letterboxd. Yeah. Up Real Tie. Uh, you can Got find it. me on Twitter at Franny25 <laughs> and Instagram at letterbox.upreelatom. You can find myself, Scott, at letterbox at Upreel Scott. And yeah, guys, if you enjoy this video, leave a like on it, leave a Just comment below in the comment section. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And as always, keep it real. <laughs>